Well, my name is Adam Ramsey, and I'm here because this is the launch of a book called Regeneration, in which I have a chapter that I co-wrote with a friend. We've just sat through the presentation with Evan Davis now, and you made some very interesting points. What's the, the gist of the, the chapter that you wrote? Well, what we argue in the chapter is that community participation, particularly in things like budgeting, is a better political strategy for the left in building support for a welfare state and for social solidarity than is universalism, which was, of course, the strategy of most of the mid-20th century. And uh, some people were suggesting that perhaps the intergenerational framework wasn't that useful. What, what, where do you stand on that? I think that it's a useful way to understand how it is that benefits are being withdrawn. They're being withdrawn primarily from people who've never had them before rather than from people who have, although they're losing them too. And I think it's a useful way to understand the failure of neoliberalism to plan. Um, I think that there's an extent to which it begins almost being identity politics when you look at how um, a very mobile generation particularly builds relationships with other people of their generation more than they do across generations in more traditional familial communities. But I think it's not primarily in identity politics like, like gender or race um, can be. How much do you know about the work that the Intergenerational Foundation is doing then? I'm, I'm pretty familiar. I've, uh, I've been having conversations with Shiv about it since before its inception. So um, I, uh, I've been aware of its existence since before it existed. And uh, I guess I might say I was almost there at its inception, conception. Um, but um, and I've been following it with interest ever since. Are there any particular intergenerational issues that concern you? I think there are lots of issues which concern me. Um, housing is clearly an issue particularly affecting my generation. The fact that I think 29% of men under the age of 30 or maybe it's 35 still live at home is, is terrifying. Look at the mouldy, damp hovels in which many of my, into which many of my generation are crammed and you begin to understand quite how much things have changed. You know, many of my generation live in houses that would be illegal 30 years ago. And, uh, and so, you know, so that's a huge issue. Look at employment and unemployment and underemployment and conditions in employment of young people in Britain today and we're in a worse state than we've been since before the Second World War, you might argue. Um, so huge issues affecting my generation and um, yeah, huge, huge problems there. Of course, it's also true those problems affect people from other generations, but that doesn't mean to say it's not useful to understand there is a correlation between those problems and age. And do you think it necessarily has to be framed in the terms of a conflict between the generations, or is it actually a, a problem that politics just hasn't got round to solving it? Well, just as gender politics isn't about men against women, and just as racial politics isn't or doesn't have to be about black people versus white people, no, I don't think it should be about a conflict between generations. It's about understanding that, com that conflict and that oppression is complex and, and multifarious and intersectional. And unless you begin to look at all these different lenses through which people are oppressed, you can't truly understand oppression.